Okay, welcome back to my next video on the uh, beginner's guide to uh, SOLIDWORKS. So today we're going to continue on from where we finished our last video, and I'll put the link for that at the top. Um, what we're going to have a look at today is progressing on to extruding onto a model, um, and also the use of the, uh, the fillet tool and the chamfer tool, which are both up here within the features section. So if we want to extend a model um, and add extra parts to this, what we can do, rather than now drawing on a plane, we can continue to draw onto the model itself. So if I click uh, the top surface there of that model, I can select sketch and sketch onto that top surface. Uh, now, if I want to use a rectangle tool, and I can draw um, onto that plane. So if I go normal to that plane, and that will bring that straight on. Now what that will allow me to do is if it's straight on, I can see better when I'm actually drawing. So it's a good idea to always draw with your plane straight onto. Uh, I've got this rectangle here. Um, now I can position that in the centre if I wanted to. Um, it's going to be 25 in from each end. Um, 25 in from the side. Okay, um, let's make that 50 by 50. And I'm going to extend that up from the original surface. So I'm just going to turn it to an angle so I can see what's going on. If I go to Features now, and I click Extrude, or Space, that will add the material in so I can extend that by however much I want on the side here. So let's go up by 50 by like 7. So. Okay. Um, now we can create that in any shape, so it doesn't have to be a square. It could have been any shape if we wanted to put on and extruded it up. So that's how we add material onto a model. We did cut it away in the last video. So again, go and have a look at the last video for that. Um, uh, but also we can fillet and chamfer off edges of these as well. So if we use the fillet tool, we'll go and have a look at that. So that within the fillet tool, there's quite a few different options that we can use. So if I would just want to uh, fillet the edges, I can select an edge and Make sure it's on full preview on the side and it will show me what's going on. So I get a full preview there of that fillet. Now, I don't have to just do an edge. What I can do is I can select a face. And if I select that face, every edge around that face will be filleted to follow or to suit like so. So I'm just going to show you that one there. And we'll leave it like that. So there's a nice fillet there on the inside edge of the bottom of that step and around the outside there. Okay. Now we can do different types of fillet. Let's just pop back into the fillet tool there. So we can do fillets where it's going off at an angle. So it starts wider at one edge than the other. Um, we'll just select the edge and then we can select the edge and we can define what size fillet we want in the different sides. So we click on each edge, so the variable sizes for each end, for the edge, and I can set one end to 20, and I can set the other end to 10, like so, and you can see there in the preview the shape that it creates, I'll just add down there so you can have a look, so it actually changes, so we've got a wider fillet on one end compared to the other. Um, now we can also use the fillet tool to dome off this top as well. So if I wanted to dome off this top and uh, come up to the fillet tool here, I can select the end one here and it asks me to select three faces. So I'm going to select that face, and I'm going to select the top face, and I'm going to select the outside face. Make sure that they're in the individual boxes and it will make a dome to the diameter of the outside, the outer sizes of that box, in this case, 50. So it's a radius, in this case, sorry, of 50. So if I tick that then, 
and you'll see it apply the dome onto the top of the model, like so. Okay, now fillets are great for being able to do rounded off edges, um, doming parts like so, uh, but we can also use the chamfer tool. So let's have a look at the chamfer tool. I'm just going to delete these fillets. We can have a look at the chamfer tool. Okay, so the chamfer tool works very similar. If we go to the fillet section and drop down and go to chamfer, we can use that to be able to specify what type of chamfer we want. Now the first one will work with the distance and the angle, which can be specified here at the bottom. So we can set the distance we want to go across and the angle we want the chamfer at. The second one just works off dis distances. Now we can have them symmetrical, so 10 down and 10 across. So, or we can set them asymmetrical, where we would set the distance in one direction and distance in the other. We can also work a chamfer from a single point. So as an example, if I pick the top corner here, you'll be able to see in the preview, I mean, if this box over, um, I've got a chamfer that's going in three directions. And I've got the sizes here. I can alter these sizes at the bottom and keep them equal distances, or I can alter them here as well in the text box at the top. Uh, any distance that I alter, Will change along on the preview, as you can see there. Okay, and this allows us to be able to create uh, diagonal chamfers on the edges of the corners of shapes. So it's about 20 as well. Um, and you get a preview view of that. So we're effectively cutting off the whole corner rather than just chamfering down one side of the model. We can remove larger sections. Um, now, the most top popular chamfer tool to use is generally the distance and the angle. So if I just click an outside edge, you'll see there that it's pulling up a distance and the angle here, which we can change. So if I change that to 15, and I change that to, say, 30 degrees, you'll see the change in the chamfer. Um, change that back to 45, and we'll take off that whole edge. You can see how you can start to remove material just using the chamfer tools rather than having to draw out a sketch um, and cut away that material or add the material to it. Okay, so that's going to do it for um, fillets and chamfers for this next video. So in the next video coming up, we're going to have a look at how we use uh, the Revolve tool here in our features and we'll have a practice with that and get to know the best way to model using the Revolve tool. So I'll see you in the next video. If you like the content, subscribe, leave a comment and hit that like button. Thanks very much.